is the Note 20 Ultra valuable or does it hold any value in 2024? I say yes, it definitely holds value. But at the same time, that's a decision that you have to make. I can't make that decision for you. But based on my opinion, I think it's still a valuable phone and that it holds definitely holds value. Now, you start off with this beautiful, beautiful design, this bronze, even though some it looks like more like rose gold than bronze to me. But I like the way. These cameras are how they have the same color around them as the back of the phone. I love the way it feels. You got that nice matte finish. It's not slippery. Now, it can be slippery if my hands are dry. But, you know, if your hands are somewhat moist, then it's not going to feel slippery if you don't want to use a case on it. But <laughs> the reason I always use a case because, it, you know, the corners will stab me in the palm and that's uncomfortable for me. But when it comes to design, man, you're talking about a beautiful, beautiful device. This device is absolutely gorgeous. Now, it does come with the curved display, which I know nowadays everybody's whining and complaining about a curved display. Not everybody, but I hear a lot of content creators, you know, moaning and groaning about, oh, I want a flat display. I'm tired of the curved display. And there's nothing wrong with that. OK, but. Curved displays don't really bother me. Um, I guess they're upset because of the now sometimes the glare on the sides in the corner can be somewhat of a pain if you're in direct sunlight, but not a big deal for me, honestly. Only I say only in the case of using the S Pen, it could be a problem having a curved display. But this phone is really not super curved, it really isn't, and it's definitely comfortable. Like I said, the only thing when it comes to comfort is you know just the corners can stab you in your hand but i mean if you don't hold the phone that tight like that in your hand then it's not gonna you know feel uncomfortable at all but i use a case now let me let me say this now i'm gonna put the case back on the phone because i will end up dropping this phone <laughs> so now that the you know you already saw the build quality then I got to put a case back on it. But let me wipe it down, you know, so I can get rid of these fingerprints. You know, some people have OCD. Stuff like that sometimes bother me, but not all the time. But while we're here, check this out. Now, I, I know you can see that there is absolutely no scratches on this display. Now, this has Gorilla Glass Victus. Look, not, not only no scratches, no micro scratches Unlike the S23 Ultra, that thing had tons of um, micro scratches on it. And the whole time I had that phone, I didn't put anything in my pocket with that phone. And I still got tons and tons of micro scratches. But if you really look closely, you don't see any scratches. You don't see no um, micro scratches, nothing. I mean, honestly, they didn't have to upgrade to any more Gorilla Glasses for me, Gorilla Glass, because Gorilla Glass Victus was perfect. OK, now I don't drop my phone a lot, but if you get a good case, you don't have to worry about dropping and shattering, you know, the front display. But I know everybody don't like cases, but I'm just saying Gorilla Glass Victus is excellent. No micro scratches, no regular scratches at all. And I'm so confident in the Gorilla Glass Victus that I often, often Put this phone in my pocket with my keys. And like I said, still no micro scratches, no regular scratches. So Gorilla Glass Victus is the truth. I love it. Of course, you got your always on display. Love that. And, you know, your icons are colored. Now, I think that's something they actually took away with the S24 Ultra that they're no longer colored except I think Flossie Carter said except YouTube. And I think not even regular YouTube, but the YouTube... Um, you call that where the con content creators, you know, can see and answer comments. I, I, it just escapes my mind at the moment, but that's the only one that's actually colored, which is unfortunate. But <clears throat> love the design, love the build quality. No micro scratches. The display. Look, six point nine inches of nothing but beautiful quad HD display. 
Now, I'm using 1080p only because I want to use the higher 120 hertz refresh rate. You cannot use Quiet HD and the 120 hertz rate at the same time on this phone, unfortunately. I don't know why Samsung made this phone like that, but that's what they did. But it's still absolutely beautiful, and then you just get used to it. You just adjust to it. And it will help with the battery a little bit because when you use Quiet HD, it's going to use more pixels. Now, when it comes to performance, I'm honestly not having any issues with performance. This phone still performs really, really good. I mean, everything is still pretty fast. It keeps up, you know, no problem with speed. Hold on, let me clear everything in the background so I can give you a better you know, better go at it. See how fat now every app, some apps are going to open a little slower, but you can see for the most part, everything opens pretty quickly. I mean, this, this device is by no means slow. It is not slow. This device can keep up with just everything else that's out there. Now my banking app always opens slow for some reason, but you see everything else is coming open really, really fast. This phone is not slow and it has not even slowed down. No issues at all with performance. And I mean zero issues with performance. Unlike my S23 Ultra where I was having some serious uh, performance issues. I just was. I don't know. Maybe I got a, a bad device. But, you know, in my comment section, I'm hearing from other people that they were having performance issues too. Lag, glitches. So I'm not the only one. So... I'll say this. I'm not saying S23 Ultra is a bad device. I'm not saying that at all. Okay. I think that's a really, really good device, but it has some issues or at least the one I got had issues and some other people were, were experiencing the same things I was experiencing. And if the performance is bad, the phone for me is unusable. But with the Note 20 Ultra, four years later, performance is still great on this device and it's very smooth. And one thing I want to make very clear is consistently smooth. Unlike, once again, sorry to say, but the S23 Ultra was not consistently smooth. All right. Now, the next thing is you're getting 12 gigs of RAM. Unlike the base model of the S23 Ultra, which only gave you eight. Now, why Samsung took away four gigs is beyond me. I don't know why you would go from 12 for the base model to eight. If anything, you go, you start at 12, maybe go up to 16. Then you, if you want to go up to 20, you could do that. But why would you take away uh, RAM? I, I don't understand that. But 12 gigs of RAM standard on the Note 20 Ultra. Now, the one thing I also love about this device too, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. I know there's a lot of people out there that's good, that misses this. You know, if you don't have this phone, but if you have this phone, you're still loving it is expandable storage and expandable storage up to one terabyte. I currently have a one terabyte SD card in here along with the 512 gigs of internal storage. So I have basically unlimited storage. And if I shoot, if I decide I want to shoot 4K at 60 or even 8K, which I wouldn't do, but if I want to shoot 4K at 60, I could shoot it to my heart's content. I got plenty of internal storage and I could also, when I shoot videos, I could have it go directly to the SD card. So that's something that you're really going to miss if you upgrade it to the newer Samsung devices. And the next thing I want to say, too, is that, you know what I also missed about this phone when I uh, started using the S23? I was missing this bad boy right here, the, the Gear S. With this, it's compatible. You can definitely use the Gear S with the Note 20 Ultra. But if you go to, once you go to S21, this is no longer compatible. It will not work. I don't know of any workarounds or none of that, okay? It just, I just know it won't work. And that's the thing that frustrated me because right before I returned to S23, I decided, you know, on the weekend, you know, this is something I could wear because I'm not working. And I said, you know what? I'm going to use my Gear S3 for the weekend. And I put it on, got it all, you know, started messing around, trying to, you know, get it to hook up. And I'm like, why isn't it working? And then I remembered it's not compatible. It will not work. 
So that's disappointing. But with the Note 20 Ultra, I'm back in business and I've been using this all weekend and I've been loving it. I just love this. It's a shame Samsung never went back to this design because this is this is by far one of the best phones they ever made. Next, the dual stereo speakers on here. They're not that bad. You know what? I know that the ones on the S23 Ultra were definitely better. They were way louder. But these are not, you know, like they were average sounding speakers. They're not. These speakers on here sound really good. So I have no issues with the speakers at all. But the S23 Ultra speakers were definitely louder. And the sound was a little bit more enhanced. IP68 water and dust resistance. No issues with that. Love that. This phone has that. Wireless charging. Reverse wireless charging. Even though the speeds are very slow. But at least it's on here. Samsung DeX. And also, I love these cameras. These cameras still can compete with cameras out there today, in my opinion. Now, my opinion may not matter to many of you, and that's okay. But in my opinion, these cameras are still really really good matter as a matter of fact like i said i have two of these two note 20 ultras and i film all my content with the um with the note 20 ultra that's what i'm filming right now with my other note 20 ultra and everything comes out fine to me i like the quality i have no issues with the quality so when it comes down to photos and videos this is still a great device when it comes to the cameras and like i said the build, the design, the speakers, the display. Now, the face unlock is still trash. The fingerprint sensor, my thing is, only thing I got to do is just hold my finger there. If I do that, I'm not, I don't really have any issues with it. It's when I want to do it really fast like that. Sometimes it just won't work. But if I just hold my finger there, it's pretty much going to open every time. It's not as fast as the S23 Ultra. But if I just hold my finger there for like a second, it works every time. But the face unlock is still trash. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it's still trash. So good speakers, um, good performance, great display. Battery life still, It I barely get through a day. Sometimes I can. I got to charge in the middle of the day. That's that, that was always my biggest issue with this phone. They just didn't put a big enough battery in here. They should have put a 5,000 milliamp hour battery in here. I have no idea why they only put a 4,300 milliamp hour battery in here. Either 4,300 or 4,500. I forget exactly, but it's too small. You know, the same size battery they put in the S20 Ultra, they should have put in here. I have no idea why Samsung does stuff like that. Like I said, they take um, one step forward, two steps back. I just don't get it. But in my opinion... The Note 20 Ultra still holds value in, tw in uh, 2024. Like I said, if you like this Gear S, you're going to love to know that you can use this with this. And also that expandable storage. Because let me show you something real quick before I end this video. Look at all of these movies. Now, this was downloaded from, you know, some sites that were viable years ago. They're not, they, no, they no longer exist. But I was able to, you know, download a ton and a ton and tons and tons of movies. As you can see, I mean, I got a lot of stuff on here. I got almost a terabyte of movies on this, dev on this device because of that expandable storage. I love that. Now, I know you can actually buy a, a, dev a Samsung device now that, that you can get it, internal storage with a terabyte. But you're going to have to pay through the nose for that. You might be looking at $1,600. That's crazy when it's already built in. You could just put the SD card in there and you're good to go. And keep in mind also, this phone is going to be considerably cheaper than the newer devices. And like I said, <laughs> display, great, okay? Battery life, question, you know, questionable. But that depends on how you use your phone too. I'm using 100% brightness. I'm using the always on display all the time at its highest um, setting. So, and I'm using 120 hertz refresh rate. So it depends on how you use your phone. Now, if, you, if you're if um, you a light to moderate user, you're not going to have issues with the battery. But if you're moderate to heavy, 
I say, you know, you're going to have to charge it at some point during the day. And if you're a gamer, forget about it. <laughs> You'll be charging this phone within a couple of hours, honestly. So, but other than that, like I said, performance, cameras, speakers, display, build, uh, design, button placement is great. Of course, you got the S Pen, Samsung Dex. You got all your other Samsung stuff like Samsung Pay, uh, Samsung um, Edge Edge Lighting, Edge Panels, Security, uh, Security of uh, sec uh, <laughs> Oh, secure the secure folder. You got that. Sorry about that, y'all. I just got tongue tied. Secure folder, good lock, where you could take the customization to a whole nother level. I mean, One UI is my favorite skin. That's the only edge Samsung has when it comes to my other devices, is that I just prefer their skin over other skins. But like I said, I have other phones that I like better than Samsung devices. But that that one UI is what keeps me hooked up with Samsung. <laughs> that's that's that is the main reason. Okay. But this is definitely still holds value. Especially if you want a, a flagship phone and you don't want to pay a bunch of money like they charge you for these new ones. I mean, think about it. The S24 Ultra, thirteen hundred dollars plus tax. You're looking at close to fourteen hundred dollars, especially if you don't have a trade in. If you're going through your carrier and you don't have a trade in, you're going to be paying a lot of money for a while. And I just don't think it's worth it, honestly. Not that much money, seriously. And you're still getting those slow charging speeds, <laughs> you know, with the wire, the wireless and the reverse. And also you get nothing in the box. I mean, nothing. OK, no, no pre-installed screen protector. You don't get that no more. No headphone jack, no IR blaster, no expandable storage. Like you're not getting anything, but they just want you to keep paying them through the nose. Get the Note 20 Ultra, especially if you are, um, you know, a Note fan. It still has the name Note, even though I know the S20 Ultra is now, you know, I guess with the 22, yeah, it's shaped like the Note, but it's called S S22. But if you still want actually the Note, get the Note 20 Ultra. Like I said, you're going to pay less, you're still getting S Pen, you're still getting all the software. Unfortunately, you're not getting any more OS updates, and it's on its last couple of months of security updates. But if that's not an issue for you, definitely worth your money. All right, thank you all for taking the time to view this content. I do appreciate it. Hope everybody out there is staying safe, staying well, and I'll check you guys out in the next one. Peace.